Nevada Newsmakers, brought to you in part by the Tahoe Reno Industrial Center, the world's largest industrial park, the resort at Red Hawk, and the Peppermill family of casinos. High-tech companies demand perfect world amenities. They require clean, reliable power, state-of-the-art fiber optic communications, and clean water sources. In a perfect world, companies would have immediate access to rail and interstate freeways. There would be four-lane expressways that shorten shipping times and provide convenient commute routes for valued employees. Well, the future is now, and it's here. Welcome to the Tahoe Reno Industrial Center, the largest industrial park in the world, building economic prosperity for Nevadans. Something spectacular has taken wing not far from Reno or Lake Tahoe and never far from your mind. An escape of fine dining and legendary golf. Introducing the resort at Red Hawk. And at the center of it all, we've feathered our nest with new villas that have elevated Red Hawk to the status of a premier resort. The resort at Red Hawk. A beautiful new arrival in northern Nevada. Coverage of Nevada Newsmakers from the State Legislature in Carson City is brought to you by the Nevada Beer Wholesalers Association. As an employer, did you know you can be held liable for negligent hiring? A background screening by employer links can uncover criminal records like alcohol and drug convictions. It can verify the applicant's education, driving records, and professional licenses. Employer links can check civil records, registered sex offender records, and social security fraud. Hiring the right person shouldn't be a gamble. Call employer links. Employer links. Protecting your investment. I tell you, John, this industry has really changed. Tell me about it. You seem to do pretty well last year. What's your secret? Eh, no secrets. Although I'll tell you something. The smartest thing I did was sign up with Pro Group Management. Really? Yeah, they uh, do workers' comp, right? Yeah, their services are great. Hmm. And get this, they saved me 30%. I've heard they saved others 50%. That works for me. Pro Group Management. Finally, workers' comp that works for you. This is a special edition of Nevada Newsmakers with host Sam Shan, a no-holds-barred political forum. Now, from the Nevada Newsmakers broadcast headquarters, here is Sam Shan. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we're joined by Governor of the Great State of Nevada, Kenny Gwynn. Uh, rumors last night coming out that uh, we have some kind of budget agreement. You just come from Senator Raggio's office. It's 9 o'clock in the morning. What's the latest? I think they do. I, I think overall they have an agreement in principle, Sam. Uh, I don't know exactly how the figures are going to crunch uh, and come out in terms of a interfacing program, but I think they'll have that. I, I do believe that they're, they're just going back to double check to make sure that out of the 175 million dollars plus some of the other dollars they've rearranged, they'll have enough to provide for the additional kindergarten and also for the salary increase and then fund some of those other programs that uh, they've been talking about. Um, some of the stories that have come out today, uh, Sean Whaley uh, said uh, in the review, review Journal this morning, a limited program for uh, all-day kindergarten for at-risk schools. Is that correct? Well, uh, that's... Uh, it's correct in one sense. Uh, remember, I, I recommended $100 million of trust money for those schools that were in trouble and needing improvement and were on the failing list or warning list. And my program was to allow the, the principal and the teachers who have a plan that's written, required by law, that if they wanted to go with all day full-time kindergarten with that money, they could do it. So all they're doing is saying some of that money must be mandatory so that some of those people wouldn't have the choice to not have any of it spent in that category. I always expected that they would spend probably 30, 40, maybe 50 plus million dollars of that money on full-time kindergarten. As you'll know, full-time kindergarten was my one of my primary recommendations at the last legislative session, and it was funded and it got uh, didn't get funded by the legislature. So they've seen a new, I guess they got a new heart this year and saying it's an important area. Well, they're running for election. Uh, well, maybe so. Uh, but uh, I'm very happy with what they've done. I think the plan is, uh, is one of the first plans that's come along that's really got some strong accountability in it. It doesn't need good to go out and say full-time kindergarten class size reduction. Here's another $100 million if there's not accountability. And we have a commission. We have a team of people who uh, are principals that have, and teachers who have been successful at getting these schools off of the failing list. And they're the ones going to be looking at this and you can 
yes, your plan will is a good plan to, to make improvement. If they don't make improvement, we're asking to make changes in, in leadership. But, Governor, the thing about funding full-day kindergarten at at-risk schools, it is already funded at those schools with federal money. So what we're doing, we're supplanting federal money for state money. No. Uh, Title I has programs, but only a few schools have Title I. We have, we have a, a hundred plus schools that don't have Title I money. Uh, Title I money has been cut back over the years, and uh, so there's the ones that have Title I money anywhere from two hundred dollars to $225,000 a year, like I'm trying to give all these other schools, they're doing a pretty good job of getting them off the failure list. Right, but Governor, in Washoe County, there's already 20 elementary schools with full-time kindergarten programs that are funded by this Title one money. Yeah, I know, but uh, they won't. They wouldn't be funded then, because you you would come in for the grant if that's all you're doing. Why would you give a grant money on top of a Title One school? But if they've got 20, how many overall schools are on the warning list and on the failure list in Washoe? I guarantee it's a lot more than 20. Let me uh, also raise another issue that Sean Wade put in his column this morning. Uh, raises for teachers and government employees: two percent the first year, four percent the second year. Does that sound about right to you? Yes. In fact, uh, if you'll remember when I had the last presentation. Uh, to the media, and we talked about this additional $175 million that we got from the forum, economic forum, on May 1st. I said, well, uh, I would, I'm would. i not going to ask them to, to spend a certain way. I'm going to leave it alone because I think the budget has been adequately funded under the program that I had presented this time because of all the uh, new revenue that we had. Uh, education to health care to the prison system uh, safety aspects uh, and so I said then I would hope they would look at full-time kindergarten and spend some of that money and they would look also at some of the salary uh, in the second year and hopefully they could spend some of that money and I've been talking for the last couple of months to all the employee groups hoping that we could get a four percent uh, in the second year of the biennium which is about sixty million dollars uh, certainly the next legislative session to become a hundred and twenty five or thirty and that looks like what they've agreed to, and I'm very, very happy that they saw fit to do those two major areas with some of this additional money. Now, the rest of it I haven't seen in detail, uh, but we'll have to find out. I know the university, UNR, is getting a substantial dollar amount. I know that DRI is getting a, uh, 14 or $15 million for a scientific program called the CAVE, which will deal Virtual with Virtual reality. Yeah, wow. and so that will be phenomenal for us. It will match almost, for instance, the... Uh, the import of the uh, of the earthquake uh, equipment and testing and diagnostic work that we get out of UNR Engineering School. Okay. Uh, virtual Let, reality would be great. Let's talk about the, the number one issue for you, I believe, and certainly for the public, the rebate. Mm -hmm. Is the rebate still going forward as your, your plan? Yes. yes. To the best of my knowledge, and I, I talked more with uh, some of the leadership people this morning on the Millennium Scholarship, I, it's just time to settle that down. They're all pretty much in agreement. That's going to come out to most well, Certainly, we should go to 2012, probably 2016 or 17. So I think that's going to get settled in. And uh, the only other issue, really, uh, on on my entire program would be uh, the 300 million dollar rebate, and that. Uh, I've had no contact from anyone saying they want a penny out of that because I've been saying now for over two and a half months it's three hundred million dollars and it's going to go back to the people uh, in a check form and then how we distribute it is certainly up to a vote of the legislature. Over, I'm not going to argue over the detail. I think giving the money back through the car registration is by far the fairest because it includes the business people who were truly taxed the last time and uh, they would uh, benefit in some of that. But uh, look, I'm not going to go there and, uh, and, and, and say I would uh, veto a budget because it didn't get distributed the way I thought it should be. But I would over the amount of $300 million and given a check back. Okay. Are, are you in any way looking at uh, Bob Beers' plan? Uh, we, we've looked at Bob Beers' plan, and our staff tells us it just cannot be done. We, we, we would have liked to have done it, but it would take them over a year to get prepared through the computer processing programs they would have to develop and it would be into the year 2007 before they can get that done. And I've gone over and over the staff, and, and I think Jenny Lewis has done a magnificent job at DMV, and she just says, this is you can't do it any faster. And it also has some other problems. For instance, uh, if you're going to have a credit, 
then you're going to set the credits when they come in. And some people are going to get their credit in January if you started on a new registration year. And somebody else won't get theirs until December. And it causes mass confusion of people saying, well, I got my credit. Or if you change cars, it's got some problems that's related to So you to don't it. think that there would be any saving in administrative costs as Senator Beers claims? Oh, uh, anytime you can send a check out and, uh, and get a check back to the people for uh, less than a dollar, uh, that's not expensive. You're starting to handle two million uh, checks to people. And that's, uh, that's very important. Uh, everything we do costs you some money. But I think it would uh, cause our lines to get much longer at DMV. That's what Jenny Lewis tells me. And we've worked too hard to get that down from six or seven hours. And people are very happy with it. Why would you go out there now and throw something in that would cause immense confusion? And if somebody trades off their car, do they come in and get a credit on a new car? And if they didn't have enough, they say, just give me the credit now. And it can't be done. It's a very complex process. OK, we, we have to take a break. We'll be back with much more with the governor right after this. For a videotape copy of any Nevada Newsmakers program, call 775-857-2244. The tapes are $20 each, including shipping. My family started this business 27 years ago. We work hard to serve our customers and our community. But it's getting harder and harder to keep the doors open. For example, our workers' comp is going through the roof. Isn't anyone on my side anymore? The Retail Association of Nevada is. If you're a small business owner, we can cut your workers' comp by up to 50%, lobby for your interests, and keep you informed. Put us to work today. Every day come from the ground, and modern mining technology brings them to us cleaner and safer than ever before. To learn more about America's natural resources, visit nma.org, the National Mining Association. Reno's best dining values are all at one casino, the Pepper Mill. You can enjoy great savings on our popular specials. Pepper Mill's Coffee Shop offers daily lunch specials, low-carb dining, and all your favorite comfort foods. You'll find sensational lunch specials featuring Reno's freshest seafood, sushi, pasta, and more at Oceano. And early bird specials at Reno's Premier Steakhouse and Romanza Ristorante Italiano. The best values are at the Pepper Mill. Where are you dining? And now, back to Nevada Newsmakers with Sam Shad. And back on Nevada Newsmakers with the governor of the great state of Nevada, Kenny Gwynn. Always a pleasure to have you here, sir. Um, did Dina Titus and Richard Perkins help or hinder their chances to becoming governor through this legislative session, do you think? Oh, I think they both conducted themselves very well. I think they've both been uh, uh, vocal, and I think they both... Uh, have in their own positions. Uh, certainly Richard Perkins has a different position in terms of being uh, uh, the Speaker of the House and moving in that direction where he's got a majority as opposed to Dina Titus, Senator Titus, who's on the minority side. But I think uh, both of them have, uh, have handled themselves very well. It's tough when you get there. They're both for the kinds of programs that, uh, that they stand for. And certainly that's uh, in some cases full-time kindergarten, salary increase for people. Uh, you know, it's a little more difficult to always get them to go for accountability. But I think uh, in this plan that we're going to have, uh, they're accepting accountability. And so I, I think overall, yes, they've done a, a very good job. Uh, it's just too bad that they couldn't do some of these things a few weeks earlier so they don't get in this crunch at the end because it puts not so much pressure on the legislative body in and of itself, but on the backroom operations and the LCB staff. They just have to work uh, untold hours. And uh, they're tired and they're susceptible to, to making some mistakes in a very complex process and that budget appropriations bill is very it's extremely important to us to be accurate governor uh, how do you stand on the candidacy of Jim Gibbons if he declares to run for governor would you support him well I'm gonna wait until I see who all gets in a race but you didn't support yeah. him when he ran the last time so would you change your mind this time? No, I support him when he ran last time. You mean for governor? Yes. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. I was an individual citizen. I did not. Uh, Why didn't you support him then? 
Well, a, a person that was running had been a longtime friend of mine, and I didn't know Jim Gibbons uh-huh. at the time. Uh, certainly, I uh, I know him now, and we've had our di- uh, we've had our differences. So people ought to understand that. You know, uh, uh, he's been critical of me and the and the budgeting and the programs that we've had, and I thought that was very unfair. But we've talked about that. So I'm going to wait until I see who gets in the race, and then uh, I'm not going to go in and take positions in a primary. I think there will be a primary in the Republican governor's race, as well as in the Democratic race. And you should never get in and and start choosing sides uh, openly in terms of a primary. But uh, when it comes time, uh, I'll be supporting a Republican in the general election. Um, And uh, so if Jim Gibbons ended up being the candidate, you would support him? Mm Okay, um, That's yes? Yeah, I'll be supporting him. I might not be as active as I would have been in some cases unless uh, he, and, he and I can get together and he can understand what I've been doing is for the good of the people of Nevada. You know, I don't criticize uh, uh, what he does in Washington, D.C. I could go there and complain and say, well, why didn't we only get 67 or 68 cents out of every dollar that we send back there when other states get a dollar thirty-five, a dollar fifty? I don't do that kind of thing. But by the same token, uh, we've had a good talk, and uh, we'll, we'll see how it comes That's out. That's kind of a tacit Support, Governor. Tacit support yeah, for what? For, for uh, Mr. Gibbons. You don't seem to really be, you know, fired up about his his candidacy, or really fired up about supporting him. No, I'm not. No, hey. I think I think you misunderstood. I'm not, that's not a tacit support. It's not. I don't even understand what you're saying. I'm not fired about supporting him. I said I'm going to wait until I see who gets in the race, and I'm going to choose to, as to who I would support. Are you actively uh, looking for other candidates? Oh yeah, there's other candidates. Is talking very serious. Every candidate that thinks about running uh, comes to see me and sits down, and I listen to him. You mentioned Jim Rogers the last time you were on the program. Do you think that he is? Yeah, Jim Rogers, I think, is a, is a very viable candidate. And I think many people are talking to Jim Rogers uh, about this. It's a matter of will he would he be willing to, to step out of the role he's in now. He's doing a great job. I think you're going to see when it comes out of the legislative session how the university, how well it did the system. And I think that's got a great deal to do with Jim Rogers. And uh, maybe he'll take a look at it and say, well, could I do something differently and make and help Nevada more this way rather than just in one area? I just don't know. I can't speak for him, but uh, he's the kind of people. I, I believe that there will be other candidates that will step forward. Do you think uh, Mayor Bob Cashel of Reno would be one of those candidates? You know, I don't. He's talked about it. I know other people uh, are certainly uh, uh, talking about it, and they they still got plenty of time to make up their mind. It's quite evident that Jim Gibbons is in the race. He's raising money, uh, and. Uh, Others will will have plenty of time to raise money. Okay, let's take a break. More with the governor when we come back right after this on Nevada Newsmakers. This is Nevada Newsmakers. Since its creation more than a decade ago, the Southern Nevada Water Authority has focused on three goals. Preserving water quality, improving water conservation in Southern Nevada, and meeting the community's current and future water needs. Through thoughtful planning, responsible management, and collaboration, it's succeeding. As we move into the 21st century, the authority continues to embrace sustainable water development and efficient water use. That's our promise to Nevada. Something spectacular has taken wing not far from Reno or Lake Tahoe and never far from your mind. An escape of fine dining and legendary golf. Introducing the resort at Red Hawk. And at the center of it all, we've feathered our nest with new villas that have elevated Red Hawk to the status of a premier resort. The resort at Red Hawk. A beautiful new arrival in northern Nevada. Nevada Newsmakers with Sam Shad. Back on Nevada Newsmakers with the governor of the great state of Nevada, Kenny Gwynn. Uh, let's talk about uh, prescription drugs. Uh, you said that you're not going to go along with uh, Barbara Buckley's plan um, unless it has the approval of the federal government. Um, I, I have to, I, I'm not a lobbyist, but I have to let you know that uh, I take a medicine called Nexium, and I take two of those pills a day, and if I buy them at the Walmart, it costs me $250 a month. By purchasing drugs through a company in Northern California that imports in the world and with wholesale pharmacies in this country, I pay $110 a month. That is a huge savings, and I can go through a list of other medications I have to take for various ailments and give you similar savings. Why can we not do what eight other states are already doing? Well, 
Uh, first of all, I don't know where you got your information that I said I wasn't going to sign it unless the federal government agreed to it. That's an what? amendment that's been put on the bill on the well, Senate you said, side. I believe you said if, no, it, was I, if it was legal. No, what I said, if, they, if you can, and very early in the game, I said to, to Barbara Buckley, I said, look, if, when we get down to the very end of the session, if you can assure me that uh, the state of Nevada is protected, then I will give it serious consideration, and I'm still saying the same thing. How would, how would you be Well, able to there's a lot of ways, and she's been working on some of those. Uh, I don't know that you could ever get the federal government to say, yeah, it's okay, because they're going to say it's not okay. Uh, and there, there are seven, I think, or eight other states that's doing it, but that means that there's 42 or 43 that's not doing it. And there's a reason for that. But I do believe, and I think in the testimony that I heard here, uh, the person said, yeah, it was illegal. We just went ahead and did it. But I have the responsibility in the final analysis of making sure I protect the state of Nevada because if something goes wrong, uh, then we're going to be, we could be liable. Now, someone said, well, we'll have to have the same rules, uh, the pharmaceuticals uh, rules and regulations that we would have for any pharmacies in America. But then who's going to follow up? And so far, I didn't see them put any money in there to have our people travel there to make sure that they're supervising those people. Because if they make a mistake, you can't fine them, you can't uh, reprimand them, is all you can do is take them off your list. But the damage has been done. So I want to have complete surety. Just like I want a complete surety on when you start sending uh, two million checks to the people of Nevada for three hundred million dollars total. I want to be sure that that I knew from the IRS. I didn't go to LCB staff. I didn't go to my own attorney. I went to the IRS, the only place that can tell you that you're right if you do it this way. I want to know because if you don't send them 1099 and they said you should have, they can fine you one hundred dollars for each one of the checks you send out. So. I'm protected now. I know that we can send those checks, and we don't have to send a 1099. I got the answer. Around. All I'm doing, looking for Barbara Buckley and this legislative body, give me the assurances. And if it's not there, then I will take action to veto that bill if it comes to me. Let me uh, just follow up on your IRS thing. Uh, the Review, Review Journal today in an editorial said that uh, the gentleman, Mr. Blaine, who sent you uh, the memo giving you that advice, said this advice may not be used or cited as precedent. Well, sure, precedent doesn't set a precedent for them. It's an individual ruling. That's absolute, That's on everything. I've gotten a, a, a letter of opinions from IRS in my private sector life and business. That doesn't set a precedent. They give it to you. In fact, uh, it's really a confidential one, but we made it public. And if you read through it, uh, some of these people here said, well, it doesn't mean anything. Well, let them go tell the IRS it doesn't, because they're the ones that have the final say. And this is from Washington, D.C., and it took us a long time, and we had a lot of conversations with them. And I'm not doing it. They're the ones that said, here's what it is. They said the driver's license is okay for a rebate. It's just that it is all taxable. And the one on the car rebate is is not all taxable. The vast majority of it is non-taxable. That's what they've said. And it's very clear if you would take the time to read it rather than just make a political statement on it. Uh, but uh, look, I'm still willing. I'm going to fight for that program because I think it's the best. It gives back to the people who have paid in. And if you go with driver's license, and that's an acceptable thing if the legislature votes for it, I, I, I wouldn't go over and veto the bill on that basis because you're doing two things. You're getting $300 million back because our priority number one. You're getting a check back. And I wouldn't veto something over, uh, over how you're going to get it back in a, in a form like that. But everybody needs to understand they will have to declare that if they're honest people on their income tax. But we don't have to send them a 1099, so it's up to you if you want to do it. Governor, uh, yesterday in testimony, the state school board representatives said that they want to control the, the distribution of funds in your proposed $100 million uh, mm -hmm. fund for elementary remedial education mm -hmm. instead of having your idea of having a commission of teachers, parents, and, and administrators. Do you think that the school board, state school board, should be doling out this money? Well, the state school board hasn't been able to get testing right over the years. The legislative body, out of six major commissions they've set up for testing, curriculum, academic excellence, teacher certification, uh, the teacher training areas, they have not given the authority to do that. And those are elements that come around to say, 
or even the, uh, the required educational programs that every school has to put on a shelf now. They didn't give them that authority. Now they want to take the money. This is an accountability program, and I don't think they have the staff and they're capable of handling this. There's not one person over there that's taken a school off of a failing list and got it into the right mode that we want. We need the people like the principals and the teachers from Corbett and Anderson Elementary School. They're taking the most difficult situation and getting their schools off. Now, why do we want to take it over and put it into an education department that has no staff? They just finally got a grant writer this year for the first time. And we've been telling them, you need grant writers. They don't write grants. So the legislature has never trusted them to do this. So why would you now put the most critical part of this implementation program for $100 million into the hands of somebody that you haven't trusted with curriculum, testing, academics. I mean, think about it. Uh, the, uh, even when they did the program for the uh, university, they didn't involve them to set up the formula. So if they don't trust them and they don't fund them, I think uh, the Department of Education could be much better, but the legislative body just doesn't fund them. They'll go and look at their limited staff. Uh, so I, I don't think they're, they're qualified to do it, and uh, I would hope that the legislature wouldn't see it that way. And that's where we have to leave it. Governor, thank you so much for being here. We'll be right back on Nevada Newsmakers after this. Nevada Newsmakers, brought to you in part by the Tahoe Reno Industrial Center, the world's largest industrial park, the resort at Red Hawk, and the Peppermill family of casinos. Here at the Tahoe Reno Industrial Center, water resources come from fresh, clean groundwater, approved by state permits. The water is pumped from wells to million-gallon storage tanks and then distributed to TRI companies. Another amenity is our investment in a state-of-the-art wastewater treatment plant. This disposal system converts waste to clean water for industrial applications. Welcome to the Tahoe Reno Industrial Center, the largest industrial park in the world, building economic prosperity for Nevada. My family started this business 27 years ago. We work hard to serve our customers and our community. But it's getting harder and harder to keep the doors open. For example, our workers' comp is going through the roof. Isn't anyone on my side anymore? The Retail Association of Nevada is. If you're a small business owner, we can cut your workers' comp by up to 50%, lobby for your interests, and keep you informed. Put us to work today. South Reno's hot spot for food, fun, and friends is the Tamarack Junction. Enjoy great food 24 hours a day in the dining car restaurant. For a quick bite and the best sandwiches in town, it's the Whistle Stop Deli. And for the best appetizers and menu selections and a large variety of cocktails, beers, and martinis, it's Sully's Sports Bar, Grill, and Nightclub. The Tamarack Junction is your junction for fun. South Virginia and Monty Ranch Parkway. by America's mining companies, more than 2 million acres already have been reclaimed. To learn more about reclamation or other aspects of mining, visit nma.org. The National Mining Association. Coming up on the next Nevada Newsmakers, Senators Bob Beers and Valerie Weiner. We'll see you then.